floor, bring a little short devotional. Let's have a little prayer, Father God. Understand in weakness, Lord. But God, you can make weak things strong. You choose the weak to confirm with the wise and the strong, Lord. So, Father, I ask for strength from you. I ask power from you, Lord, anointing from you. And Lord, as these few words go forth, I pray, God, that it would just rest on someone's heart and may it grow into salvation for somebody here or somebody watching at home and may not know Jesus Christ. I ask these things in the truth, our Savior's name. I did not have a clue what to talk about tonight. But with the, what has transpired in our community and core this week, I came up with I came across this and there's a title. Facing the impossible. Facing the impossible. That's what that their family had to endure this week. Facing the impossible. How do you face it? You really can't. If it happens just to you, you just go on. But you know, there are thousands and thousands of impossible situations that people face every day. Every single day. You may be facing something that only you know about. You and the Lord, He knows. You're facing it and you're wondering, oh, I'm going to get through this. I don't like to keep going back to my situation, but only God knows how much I've been hurting since last year. Only God knows. The pain inside. The unseen pain. The unseen hurt. And there could be others here tonight. Could be someone watching at home. Unseen pain. Pain that only you and God know about. So if you're facing something drastic in your life, there is good news. There's always good news from His Word. There's always good news in His Word. And there's always strength and power to get to the other side. Amen? And speaking of that, this evening, our scripture that I'll read to you in a moment is taken from the Exodus 14. You get it to read verse 5. And this particular passage is about when Pharaoh finally decided after all of the plagues that God laid upon in Egypt to let his people, the Israelites, go. When that happened, horse to God, their horse, donkeys, and whatever they had, and they moved out. And it was, I forget the number now, but it was, I think it was a million or more. It was, put it this way, as we say in Newfoundland, it was a fine crowd. They left Egypt and made their way through the desert. Well, you know what happens. The Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. But anyway, Pharaoh, he didn't, uh, he changed his mind. He said, no, I don't want to let them go. He was build, building buildings for me and doing all kinds of work. I'm not going to get that replaced. So just let's read it together. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. 
So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots along with all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen and troops pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near, your guess is as good as mine, Piharat, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached the Israelites, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, they didn't do much crying to the Lord, don't notice that? Then they said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that he brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance, or as it says in the good old King James, the salvation of the Lord. And Moses goes on to say, The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. I'm going to stop there. Facing impossible situations. What do we do? You know, sometimes we'll a situation and I say, I just forget it and maybe it'll go away. Have you ever done that? You try to forget it, not think about it, it might go away. Well, if you don't have to close your eyes or ignore the problem and pretend that it doesn't exist because it does, but you know, God has the answers. You don't have to panic, you don't have to be afraid, but God has the answers. From the scripture we found the people of God facing the impossible situation on their back are the enemies marching to take them. On their left and right are towers of rocks and desert, while on their front is the Red Sea. They are literally in what seems to be a tremendously impossible situation. They have big problems and very little time to think and find a solution to those problems. But you see, as on our sign says, everybody, anybody read our sign? Don't tell, right now, <laughs> don't talk about how big your problems are, tell your problems how big your God is. Something similar to that, right? Something similar to that. That's what we have to do. That's what they needed to do. You know, what else could they do? Could, you know, lift up the banner, wave the flag, I surrender? You know, take their chances by running into the mountains, the rocks? Or fighting back, they wouldn't have stood a chance because they didn't have the weapons. Well, none of these would have worked. But hold on, our awesome God has a solution. And through his prophet Moses, God gives them and he gives us tonight a threefold solution, and, a and it is completely different from any human standpoint. If we were faced with an impossible situation, this is not what the world would say for us to do. Moses speaks the word of God to the people. Listen again to what he says. <coughs> Moses answered the people, number one, so you'll be able to say it when you leave. Well, I know what Captain talked about. Number one, do not be afraid. Number two, stand firm. And number three, see the salvation or deliverance of your Lord. 
First off, do not be afraid. We all know that it was not easy. It's not an easy thing not to be afraid. When you're facing danger, when you're in a predicament, when you're in a situation, whatever sickness, whatever it's financial difficulties, whatever it may be, facing surgery, anything, none of these situations are easy. If you're going through a time of distress, when all you can see is darkness, it seems only natural and human to be afraid, doesn't it? But you know, my friends, God tells us many times in his word, fear not or do not be afraid. In fact, I Google it. You know what Google it means? Those who are in computer buffs, that means you put type it into Google and it tells you the answer. Simple as that. And in the King James Version of the Bible, Melchior's Version, fear not is there 74 times. Do not be afraid 29 times. In the NASB Bible, which is similar to the NIV, <clears throat> fear not is there four times. Do not fear 57 times. And do not be afraid 46 times. But you know something when it comes to fear? If God only told us once not to be afraid, that would be enough, wouldn't it? But he told us many a times, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Now, did the Israelites had air to that? Did they do that? No, because they cried out. They were terrified, the word says, and they cried out to the Lord. So no, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. What are you facing tonight? What are you facing? Are you afraid? Are you afraid? Well, you know, we're only human. We're only human. But we do have someone that is bigger on our side. And I know that. The voice situation. It's a hard thing to do for somebody who has an anxiety disorder. Anxiety is fear. Not to be afraid. Most of the time I'm not. But when I'm sick, you do that. <laughs> but that problem, it's very big in my life. But God's bigger. God is bigger. He's bigger than the armies of, it, of uh, the Egyptians. He's bigger than any problem you're facing tonight here. Any problem you're facing home, God is bigger. We just need to bring it to the Lord. Bring it to Him in prayer. Realizing that God is bigger than anything and anyone. Sometimes we talk about the devil. Sometimes we talk about him too much. We have to be aware. Because the Bible says, He's like, now get this word, like is big. Like the roaring lion, he's not a roaring lion. We serve the lion of the tribe of Judah, who was not powerful, and that's Jesus Christ. So bring your fear to God, friends. Trust Him. I know sometimes it's easier said than done, and I've been there. But trust Him. He's bigger than your problems. Moving right along. Secondly, stand firm. <laughs> stand still. Now you think about that for a second. Something, you're in a predicament, you're in a, a, a life a, a changing a time when, when things are going wrong and, and everything is just misery. God tells you, stand, stand firm. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Any other ground is sinking sand. Because I believe for my own personal situation, if I didn't have Christ, I probably wouldn't be here tonight. But it's because of Christ, I am more than a conqueror. Show him that loves us. So stand firm. Stand firm. If you're going through something, just stand firm. Don't try to 
solve the problem by yourself. Let your God help you with the problem. See, it's East, basically one of the only ones that can get us out. Stand firm. Did the Israelites stand firm? No. They did a bit of complaining and getting upset with Moses. What did he have done to us? Bring us across the barrens on a stormy night like last night. They didn't stand firm. But Moses told them, be still. Stand firm, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Look at verse 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Do you believe that that miracle happened? That God opened the Red Sea? Some people, some people who dispute God's word say that the, the Red, Red Sea is probably only a few feet deep. And some preacher said, well, how did God drown all those people in the little water? He pulled he, he did it. Moses, that was only an act, I guess, an extension of Moses' faith. God done the, the miracle. God done the power. Open up the sea. They crossed over. Their God delivered them. So my last point, and the last point that comes right from the scripture is see the salvation or deliverance of the Lord. Like I said earlier, they complained. They didn't visualize their victory probably through praise and prayer they didn't do that they just complained about the situation they were in instead of simply trusting in God not trusting in Moses uh, who was a great man a great leader but trusting in God that he would deliver them from the hand of Pharaoh and he did so friends as we move forward into an unknown week we don't know what tomorrow holds, do we? We found that out last Sunday. And we got the word of the tragedy the next day. All I can say is, if you're not living for Jesus Christ, you should be. Why? Because he can save your soul from eternal damnation. Instead of going to a place you don't want to go to, you will spend eternity with him in heaven with your loved ones as well as well you'll have a good life here on earth so friends whatever you're facing and whatever you have to face those watching at home remember don't be afraid because God tells us not to be afraid even though you may at some times but just hang on hold on to Jesus as the chorus says and ride out your storm hold on hold on don't be afraid Stand firm on the rock of Christ Jesus. Stand firm. When things start to shake, you will not be shaken if you stand on the rock. The rock that is Christ Jesus. And don't get yourself on a tizzy trying to get things done, trying to fix your own problems. Just wait. Stand firm. Trust Him. Don't be afraid. And you'll see the salvation of the Lord.